Thank you very much. Uh, I have to admit I was a little bit surprised as uh, Katarina, Ben and Claudio asked me to take part in this conference since uh, isotopes and genes were not actually in the focus of my research, but uh, on the second thought I think this could be a good opportunity to address some of the questions and the issues that I encounter in my research in the Balkan area, especially when it comes to understanding of prehistoric societies uh, or in this case, Bronze Age societies, I believe that, at least from the archaeological point of view, we have a sufficient amount of evidence to back away from the explanation model based on so-called cultural ethnic groups. It's actually the archaeological record itself that provides a rather heterogeneous and far more complex picture of uh, Bronze Age societies. So speaking of diversity, I think it's also important to underline that the region that I will be talking about involves actually several very different landscapes, uh, starting from the plain lands and lowlands in the north, in the border to the Carpathian Basin. And um, so this is the slide that uh, should uh, illustrate the diversity of the landscapes in the area that I'm talking about, the plain lands and lowlands around big, uh, along big rivers in the north mountainous area of Western uh, Balkan, and of course Adriatic coast, a narrow coastal line of Adriatic coast. These different environments offer of course a variety of resources and require very different adaption and subsistence strategies that eventually one would at least assume would be reflected in the cultural development of both prehistoric and modern societies. Here's just a short outline of my paper. I will begin with a review or overview of the uh, current established Bronze Age narratives in the Balkans. Of course, uh, appearance of the burial mounds in the early Bronze and Middle Bronze Age and spreading of the cremation uh, are one of the most uh, common indicators of people movement. I will also talk a little bit about the concept of cultural ethnic groups and possible revival of this concept and uh, of course I think it's more than necessary if we are talking about Balkans and genetics to uh, mention some of the implications and consequences uh, for this region. So the beginning of the Bronze Age in the Balkans is widely perceived as a period of migration and emergence of new distinctive cultural phenomena. The narrative of early Bronze Age among scholars working in the Balkans was for a long time strongly influenced by studies of Maria Gimbutas, the name that we heard already, with well-known Indo-European theory of, theory of new populations arriving from the East and triggering the new developments. Tumuli burials with crouched skeletons and occasional appearance of ochre in graves were seen as a main archaeological evidence of the new migrations. However, tumuli burials with such characteristic are seldom in the Balkans and are more or less restricted to the area of Banat in the Northeast. Regarding the other early Bronze Age groups in the Balkans, whose distribution, by the way, more or less correspond with these landscapes that I just mentioned, uh, we have uh, of course, tumuli all over the uh, place, but from the very beginning they expose uh, great diversity regarding size, material, uh, burial right, and so on. Even in the earliest phase of tumuli, it's obvious that domestic elements are prevailing, especially among pottery finds. Here's just an example of two uh, tumuli in the northern Serbia, in the sites of Batajnica and Vojka with the pottery finds that can clearly be assigned to Vucedol local Copper Age complex. Divergent from the assumed influence of the new population arriving from the east is also cremation burial rite, which is observed in both of these cases. The great variety of burial forms can also be noted not only between depicted early Bronze Age groups, but also within one group itself, indicating perhaps their heterogeneous composition. Here are just a few examples that should be sufficient to illustrate the diversity and complexity of the early Bronze Age burial rites. Even in this relatively small region such as Western and Central <coughs> Balkan, we have a typical cremation in urns, in flat graves in the area of Inkovci culture, cremation graves with a, or without urn and inhumation graves under earth tumuli in the area of Belotic, Bela Crkva and Glasinac group, or inhumations in cremation graves under stone tumuli in the Adriatic hinterland with a typical repertoire of Cetina culture. As for Cetina culture, it is also to add that similar burials are also known from the very early phase that it's also in the Copper Age. But 
the research is going on and we are, uh, we are uh, now aware that there are actually even more diversity in the burial. For example, the recent excavation in Ranutovac in southern Serbia revealed to this point in Balkan's unknown type of early Bronze Age cemetery with circular stone constructions and cremation graves without urn. The ceramic finds from the cemetery clearly point to the connection with northern Greece or Armenohori culture. So regarding the early Bronze Age, it's, it is to, co to conclude that archaeological record, even at this insufficient stage of investigation, provides a complex, multifarious picture that is hardly to explain with unilateral movements or migrations. And even in the case where new elements are obvious, such as appearance of tumuli burials, they are usually accompanied by distinct local and domestic pottery, pointing to rather mutual than one-sided relationships. Important is also the fact that the uh, concept of these cultural cultural groups that is established for the early Bronze Age will be prevailing also for the later periods. Contrary to early Bronze Age, the period of Middle Bronze Age is among almost all scholars consistently described as a period of steady progress based on so-called ethnical and cultural components formed in the early Bronze Age. Despite significant changes both in material culture and burial rites, migrations were actually never considered as a facilitator of the changes in the Middle Bronze Age. One of the reasons could be the fact that there is no historical or linguistic background that would favor or support migration theories during this time. However, if we just look at the archaeological record, there's a number of fundamental changes and new appearances that also could be linked with certain migrations or movement of the people and the groups. One of these significant new novelties in the Middle Bronze Age is the establishment of cremation as a main burial rite in the groups with encrusted pottery along Danube by the mid of the second millennia BC. For some of these local groups with encrusted pottery like Juto, Berdo, Gerlamare, it is assumed that they could originate out of smaller scale migrations along Danube or within the so-called encrusted pottery circle. But most of the Middle Bronze, Middle Bronze Age development was usually described as a local progress of domestic populations, although, as I said, the finds point, point to the change in almost every aspect of archaeological record. We have a, now exclusive cremation burials, new ornamental canon, figural representations, and so on. <clears throat> A completely new picture in, pre in comparison to previous periods is also documented in the area of neighboring Parachin group in the region south of Danube. Typical for Middle Bronze Age and beginning of the Late Bronze Age of this region are cremation urn graves and circular stone constructions. Unlike in previous case, the pottery is mostly undecorated and other, than vessels, other vessels than urns are seldom. Uh, despite the occurrence of this new cultural phenomena in a region with no comparable traditions in the early Bronze Age, the previous studies did not consider any kind of migration as decisive for the genesis of Parachin group. Instead of that, the emergence of the group and development was ascribed to so-called local ethnical substrate that goes back to the early Bronze Age. Comparable assumptions about uh, local development, uh, cultural and ethnical continuity were also made for Tumuli burials in the mountainous zone of Western Balkans in the Middle Bronze Age. Interesting in context of possible movements of people and groups are two regions, since they expose completely new elements during this time frame. First region is Western Serbia, uh, with a clear tradition of tumuli graves in the early Bronze Age. Major difference in the Middle Bronze Age is the occurrence of urn graves under tumuli with pottery forms well corresponding with Danube area or late Watin culture. Yet both pottery forms and cremations were explained as adoption of new cultural elements from the north, while the erection of tumuli as a strong local component was regarded as decisive for cultural ethnical assignment of Middle Bronze Age communities in Western Serbia. A second case demonstrates a quite opposite approach, and these are the tumuli in the micro region of Kupres High Plains in the southwestern Bosnia. By the time of discovery in the mid 80s by Alois Benac, these monuments were uniquely, with uniquely preserved finds of wooden sledge coffin and textile, were interpreted as the remains of the late migration of steppe elements from the east and dated in the early Bronze Age. It should be added that this dating was done solely on premise of the migration, so it's clear the diagnostic finds could not be obtained in the field work. And although some of the C14 dates done shortly, shortly after the discovery, 
were indicating that Tumuli could be also of younger age than originally thought, Alois Beynats and his team discarded this possibility since there would be no option to connect the Tumuli in Kupres with assumed early Bronze Age migrations of herders from the east. New dates are made now for Kupres, among others for the well-preserved wool textile pointing to the same time horizon around 1500 like the, all the previous dates. Now these new dates require new interpretation of Tumuli from Kupres. Either they represent remains of some very late and until now not known migration of steppe elements or they could be assigned to local herders with early Bronze Age Tumuli tradition. I think that these examples from Middle Bronze Age to a certain extent also demonstrate disparity and inconsistency between current and established narratives and real existing, existing situation that appears to be far more compound. The lack of migration theories for this time led to the circumstances that almost every cultural shift was inevitably declared as a result of local domestic development. Regarding the final stage of Bronze Age, in the Balkans the situation is however opposite. The emergence and expansion of urnfield phenomena, the long distant connectivity of weapons and jewelry, and the extensive depositions of metals in hordes were all unavoidably linked with the turbulent times caused by big scale migrations. But again, a closer look on the situation and archaeological record on the ground reveals that things are far more complex as they could be explained with movements and of groups or individuals from A to B. First of all, even in the very early phase of the Urnfield culture, there is no uniform Urnfield cemeteries in the area between Balkans and Carpathian Basin. What we have are different regional and local archaeological groups with obvious differences, differences both in ceramic repertoire as well as in the form on cremation graves. So to affiliate them with the assumed migration of Urnfield people is not an easy task since, apart from burial rite, they do not show great resemblance. To a great extent unknown is also the relationship between the early Unfields and the Middle Bronze Age groups with established cremations. And uh, from the methodological point of view, it's certainly interesting that the uh, occurrence of the cremation in the Middle Bronze Age was described as a local development, whereas the uh, Urnfield, early Urnfields were connected with migration theories. A further characteristic manifestation of early Enfield period are metal deposits, and I think the number of intensive studies in the last decades has convincingly demonstrated that the hordes cannot be directly linked with any kind of migration or hiding of valuable goods in the turbulent times of big population movement. The comparable composition and patterns of distribution and same types, as vividly presented here for Carpathian Basin by Gabor Vaci, are not a result of coincidence, but a, purpose, a consequence of intentional selection and purpose. The distribution of hordes from early Enfield period is largely overlapping with the distribution of urn cemeteries along the southern fridge of Carpathian Basin. But, as you can see, the hordes actually are found in a much wider area, and if you would just stick to the migration theory of early Urnfields, this fact would require, of course, additional explanation. I think this is just another evidence that certain category of finds, in this case, hordes of 13th and 12th century BC, cannot be simply correlated with certain population or certain migration movements. Yet, it's obvious that concept of cultural groups had a major impact on interpretation models of Bronze Age in the Balkans. This term included not only archaeological classification of assemblages, but provided also an, an interpretation which is to a great extent based on Gustav Kosina's model of Siedlungsarchaeologie and equalization of archaeological clusters with ethnical groups, meaning a group of people having the same biological background living in a certain territory and with a special, specific material culture. Unlike the situation in uh, Northern Europe, or Central Europe actually, where this concept was more or less neglected in the decades after World War II, the use of cultural historic approach in the sense of Kosina remained to be a dominant paradigm in the Balkans until the late 20th century, or more precisely until the start of the last war in the 1990s. However, I should emphasize that most of the archaeologists of recent generations from Balkans clearly back away from this interpretation model. <clears throat> 
And while I was also personally strongly convinced that this political concept or this model that is perfectly fitting for political misusage and abuse uh, has definitely moved to the history of research, uh, the linking of biological and cultural parameters or appliance of this method in some of the recent studies of ancient day in uh, R make me doubt about this. So the first question that I ask myself and I read some of these very influential and important studies is of course, how now all of a sudden can biological sample be correlated and identified with archeological culture since I think we all agree upon the fact that is a historical construct of archeology span and not necessarily or not at all real existing entity in the past. So how is it possible to link archeological and genetic clusters without falling again into a trap of a cultural historical approach. Another thing that uh, strongly reminds me of Kostina's theory is the supremacy of migration theory as a main catalyst of changes, which again would perfectly fit into the cultural historical approach. I'm also not sure to what extent, if at all, genetic and biological data can reflect the complexi complexity and versatility of archeological record. So, I'm really having difficulties knowing all these different manifestations of Bronze Age and all this variety of finds and structures to accept that this all can be condensed in a small box with a couple of samples. Um, and if it's so, what is the significance of these samples for archaeological research? Uh, are these data providing any explanation for that, what we are discovering or excavating in the ground? especially when we're dealing with such small samples. And I think this is by far not sufficient to you know, make statement about genomic history of Southeastern Europe. <clears throat> These objections, objections to interpretation of genetic study, especially regarding third millennia BC, have been raised by several authors, Martin Furholt, Mark van der Linden, Volker Heid, and <coughs> Striking is the fact that all these papers refer to a potential risk of oversimplified explanation of genetic data, but they all also bring up the problem of revival of Kostina's cultural historical approach that was, at least for a Central European archaeology, believed to be left behind. The problematic nature of connection between archaeological terms and genetic study has been recently very clearly addressed in the paper published by archaeologists and genetic experts, and I think some parts of this uh, paper are valuable, of these valuable contributions need to be highlighted, especially about the clear methodological distinction of archaeological and gen genetic clusters and limits and possibilities of compar comparison. Another aspect that is shortly mentioned in this paper is potential of data use or misuse by third parties. And this leads me to the last and less pleasant part of my paper that will shortly address the consequences of genetic studies in the Balkan area. As we all know, the awareness of the uh, group identification is in this part of Europe to the present day strongly connected with the dominant, dominant collective identity of ethnic group with alleged cultural and biological continuity. Unfortunately, some of the recent genetic studies or rather misuse of their results largely contributed to the perception that easily can be used for the political purposes. In this context, genetic results reserve, the result served as a legitimization of certain political agendas. As you can see from these randomly collected titles, the same results can easily be manipulated, adopted, and used as an instrument of propaganda. But it's not just yellow press and media that are producing such stories. It is also science that has been instrumentalized. In this context, I would like to uh, mention uh, an article that um, received great attention in the region with uh, uh, Primorac, Dragan Primorac, the genetic specialist and Croatian Ministry of Science, Minister of Science as a leading author. Apart from complete methodological inconsistence where today's ethnical identification and political subjects are used as a sampling uh, objects and then um, projected back into the far, hast, uh, far past, I think that uh, such statement that more, of, more than 75 of Croatian men 
are most probably the offspring of old European, whoever that might be, uh, who came here after and late glacial maximum. These statements are not only controversial, but uh, I think uh, they represent a perfect starting point for any kind of political misuse. And there's a very short way from such papers with apparent scientific background to political claims and aspirations. And since we are talking about Balkans, where such claims and allegedly scientifically justified pretensions are by no means limited just to intellectual or academic debate, I think both archaeologists and genetic experts should not ignore this fact or just look away with an excuse that we are dealing just with the prehistory of Bronze Age. I think in this regard it's more than appropriate to remind of words of Bernard Hensel from his, his introduction to a conference held in the year 1992 in Berlin. The conference was actually uh, dedicated to trade and exchange in the Bronze and Iron Age in southeastern Europe, and it was taking place, as I said, 1992, during the severe war in Croatia and Bosnia. As Hensel stated at that time, the scientists cannot hide themselves in the past times of Bronze Age and claim that Balkans are just Balkans. For Bernard Hensel, it was a matter of course to take side and to speak out against vicious politics and act of war. And speaking of this time of early 90s, it is remarkable how many similarities are to identify with today's situation with regard to scientific legitimization of political goals and ideologies that at this time in 90s ultimately led to war crimes against humanity. The scientific foundation of war, war ideology was to a great extent based on alleged biological, racial, and genetic difference between peoples of the Balkan. One of the most prominent advocates of war ideology was Professor Biljana Plavšić, a renewed biologist with a respectable international scientific career and more than 100 papers published in the high-ranking journals. She was also a leading member of political party of Bosnian Serbs, and later she was convinced, convicted by the International Tribunal in Ten Hag for a prison sentence of, elf, of 11 years. In 1993, Plavšić stated that genetics are actually responsible for the conflict in Bosnia, and that the negotiation with Bosnian Muslims are not possible due to genetically deformed material. In the same year, she also stated that Bosnian Serbs are ethnically and racially superior to Bosnian Muslims. With this clear act of dehumanization of over one million people, she paved the way to so-called ethnic cleansing that she openly endorsed, and that was finally implemented in the following months after these statements. I think that these facts should be taken in consideration when we are talking about Balkans and genetic studies. I firmly believe that future studies about past and genetics of Balkan area will be aware of the fact that obtained results can easily be misused and that the consequences can affect not just academical discourse or change of paradigm, but the life of real existing people too. Thank you.